All right. Father, we thank you this morning for giving us a chance to go into Numbers chapter 26. Thank you for your word. Thank you for your wisdom. Thank you for sharing with us who you are and how you think. Thank you for giving us a mind to go out and check out every word. Because you said, according to your word, that every word that came out of your mouth is needful. That's how we live. Thank you for forgiving us this morning of our sins and help us to forgive those who have sinned against us. Father, forgive, and forgive us this morning for, for people who, when we think that we don't have to ask for forgiveness. In other words, we walk before you boldly coming in and just saying all of the good that we've done and forgive us for that and help us to see that we need you daily and this is a part of our daily bread. So we walk in knowing that <clears throat> uh, I got that privilege and it is a privilege to be forgiven. My God, thank you for not holding anything against me and help me to be an instrument that, that I don't hold anything against anybody else. In Jesus' name we pray because that's who you are. You are God. Um, all right, in the book of uh, Numbers, and I'm running kind of late this morning. This is my first time being able to sit outside in a couple of days because it's been just raining here. It is hot this morning. All right, going straight into this book is going to talk about people's names. And I'm going to attempt to uh, pronounce these names. God knew these names would be hard for me to pronounce, but I think it's a blessing to honor God by reading what he said. And even if I mispronounce it, I gave it an attempt. Because I know these names are going to mean something. And I just want to familiarize myself by just following his instructions. And I'm reading from the Message Bible this morning. And we're in the 26th chapter. That was just yesterday in the 25th chapter. Uh, so the leaders of Israel saw some pretty women. Let me tell y'all, pretty women ain't going nowhere. Those he, he, people, they're not going nowhere. They're going to be there all the time. It's gonna, there's going to always be somebody with some new confectionery. It's going to always be somebody with some new sugar. Women are not going to become less pretty. In fact, God was just trying to straighten you out now. So when you come in contact with women with, with that look that can drive you off your purpose, he said, go back and refer back to Numbers chapter 25 and you'll see that you're going to get the same thing. And these guys went across to the Midianites and the Moab women and got these women and lost their head. <laughs> and them guys lost their head. God said, put them out there in the, in, the, in, the, in, the, in the sun. Hang them guys' head up so everybody else would follow and look at what happened to these leaders. They lost their head. But they couldn't get a, they couldn't contain their women. And, and let me tell y'all, man, let me tell you, some women ain't as pretty as you think. A lot of times, enhancing, now there are a few women that, that's naturally beautiful, but then all of us get old. Some of us get sick. Some of us don't have any sense. Don't lose your head over there. It's like opening up the um, Christmas gift and it's wrapped in pretty package only to find that you got a, a pack of pecans that's not even that good. So don't, don't lose your head over a pretty woman because they ain't going nowhere. Better makeup, better hair, better everything. We Women can make the... Don't go there. All I'm saying, stay with the word, stay focused in God's plan, and know that you got a battle to fight, and keep fighting, stay in the word, and be satisfied with the woman that God has given you. If he's given you a good woman, then stick with her, and do what the word says according to her. Because number 25, next time you see somebody who just can't help himself, go back and read number 25. It was for your learning. It was for you to be educated by don't let nobody take you away from the word, word of God because just as sure as you go after a pretty woman, she's going to have you eating food that God said don't eat. You're going to hate your, you. You're not going to like it. I'm just telling you. 24,000 people lost their lives yesterday over. I just got to have her. She is so pretty. She's so fine. All right. After the play, this is uh, uh, Numbers 26. 
after the plague, God said to Moses and Eleazar, son of Aaron the priest, number the entire community of Israel by families. Count every person who is 20 years and older who is able to serve in the army of Israel. Obeying God's command, Moses and Eleazar priests addressed them on the plains of Moab at Jordan, Jordan, Jericho. Count off from age 20 and older. Obeying God's command, Moses and Eleazar the priests addressed them on the plains of Moab at Jordan, Jericho. Count off from age 20 and older. God told me that's how I wanted to do it. This is exactly what they did. The people of Israel who came out of the land of Egypt. Reuben, Israel firstborn. Reuben is the firstborn. The son of Reuben were Hanak and Hanachite, clan Palu and Pulat, clan Hezron, and the Hezronite clan, Carmi, and the Carmonite clan. These made up the Reuben clans. They numbered 43,730. Now, I, uh, this is the second census. This is not the first census. Uh, uh, census. So in, in Numbers chapter 1, in the book of Numbers is the organization of God, and it, it uses numbers. It really has something to do with numbers. But uh, I didn't bring my sheet out here. I ran it all. And it showed where they had increased or decreased. Because in the, when they first counted them, some of them uh, didn't have as many by the time they got right outside of Jericho, and some increased. And then there was some that decreased. But anyway, we'll just read because I didn't bring the sheet to show you the, the decrease or increase of the ones. 43,730. The son of Eliab, Numal, Dothan, and Ab Abiram. You remember Abiram? These were the same Dathan and, Dathan and Abiram community leaders from Korah's gang who rebelled against Moses and Aaron in the Korah rebellion. Korah's rebellion against God. The earth opened up its jaws and swallowed them along with Korah gang who died when the fire ate them up. All 250,000, 250 of them. After these, all these years, they are still in warning sign, but the line of Korah did not die out. Right, what is that saying? That this group of men right here, they all died, but they were counted as to go to the, um, the promised land, but because of their uh, going and speaking against Moses and Aaron and speaking against the word of God, they lost their lives. So Korah had a, a lot of people that was in his clan. And because he was such a, to them, prestigious speaker, he caused those people to lose their lives. And God just counted it that you ain't so important that you can disobey me. You got to follow instructions too. All right. The sons of Simeon, the second son by clans, Nemuel and Nemuelites, Jasmine and Jas Jaminites clan, Jakin and Jakinite, Zara and the Zachari Zarahites, Shaul and Shulite. They were the clans of Simeon. They numbered 22,200 men. If I'm not mistaken, Simeon lost a lot of people. I just don't have my sheet out here. He lost a whole bunch of thousands. The son of Gad by clan, Zaphon and Zephanite clan, Haggai and Haggai clan, Shani and Shani clan, Oznai and Oznai clan, Eri and Eri clan, Arodi and Oridite Ori clan, Erali and Erali clan. These were the clans of Gad. They numbered 40,500 men. Notice that these names are not the same names that is leading Israel as in the first chapter of Numbers. Things changed. All right, Aaron and Onan, these were the guys in Genesis that uh, Judah's son, they died because the first one died and the second one died because he didn't, the first one died and then the second guy, his brother died because he wouldn't give seed to give his wife. You have to go back and read that story. That woman was supposed to have a baby for her first husband if she didn't have any children. Second side, the second brother married her in Genesis. And then he decided to 
uh, not give seed when he found out his body was in in in, in, in a position to um, get her pregnant. He he said, I'll use birth control. I'm trying to say it the best way I know. The Bible said he spilled on the ground. He said, I ain't, I ain't giving you a seed. And the guy died. I mean, he ejaculated on the ground. So I ain't, I ain't, I ain't gonna give my son, my brother, your firstborn, my firstborn. And he died. His name was, er, their name was Er and Onan, were sons of Judah who died early on in Canaan. Sons of Judah by clan, Shelah and Shenite clan, Perez and Pezerite clan, Zerah and the Zerahite clan, the sons of Perez, Hezron and the Hezronite clan, Hamul and the Hamulite clan. These were the clans of Judah. Their number was 76,500. They increased. They had 76,500 men of war. The sons of Issachar by clan, Tola and Tolanite clan, Pua and Puai clan, Jashub and Jasabai clan, Shamran and Shamrai clan. These were the clans of Issachar. They numbered 64,300. The sons of Zebulun clan, Serad and Serai clan, Elan and Elanite clan, Zalil and Zale, Zalilat clan. These were the clans of Zubalan. They numbered 60,500. The sons of Joseph by clan through Manasseh and Ephraim, through Manasseh, Micah, and Micah clan. Now, Micah was the father of Gilead, Gilead the Gileadite clan, the son of Gilead, Lazar and Lezerite clan, Helak and Heliite, Helak clan, Israel and Ezraite clan, Shechem and Shechemite clan, Shemida and the Shemida clan, Hepha and the Hepharite clan, Zelor. Frohat and Hephan had no sons, only daughters. Remember this. They had no sons. They only had daughters. Their names was Malaha, Noah, Hogla, Milka, and Terza. These were the clans of Manasseh. They numbered 52,700. The next son, Ephraim, the sons of Ephraim by clan, Shutila and Shutilite clan, Becca and Beccarite clan. Dohan and Dohan clan, the sons of Shula, Eren and the Erite clan. These were the clans of Ephraim. They numbered 32,500. These are the sons of Joseph by their clan. Now, when they put an I-T-E in it, that means they're just the member of the family. The sons of Benjamin, Benjamin by clan, Bela and Be Belate clan, Ashbel and Ashblack clan, Aharam and Aharamite clan, Sufman and Shufmite clan, Huffam and Huffmite clan, the sons of Bela through Ard in Naaman, Ard in Ardite clan, Naaman in the Naamanite clan. These were the clans of Benjamin, they numbered 45,600. Hey, Damien Van. The sons of Dan by clan, Shuham and Shumanite clan, these are the clans of Dan, all Shumanite clans, they numbered 64,400. The sons of Asher by clan, Imna, Imanite clan, Ishvai, in Ishvai clan, Bera, in Berite clan, the sons of Bera, Heba, in Hebanite clan, Malchial, and Melchite clan. Asher also had a daughter, Sarah. They were the clans of Asher. They numbered 53,400. The sons of Nephtali clan, Jehazel, and Jehazelite clan, Gone, and Gone clan. Jezza and Jezerite clan, Shilam and Shilamite clan. These were the clans of Nephtali. They number 45,400. God was like, I'm organized. God spoke to Moses. He said, now I got all these folk and all these people are given, are going to Canaan. I keep my word. God spoke to Moses, divide up the inheritance of the land based on population. Now, if somebody got 75,000, they get more land. Divide up the inheritance of the land based on population. A larger group gets larger inheritance. A smaller group gets smaller inheritance. Each gets its inheritance based on the population count. God is saying, I've kept you and I'm bringing you to this land. And I have been very organized even in the wilderness. And that's how God does things. He said, just because I didn't get laws, you didn't get laws in your trees. You, get, you didn't get, I know your names. I know your name. 
Make sure that the land is assigned by lot. Each group's inheritance is based on population. The number of names listed in its ancestral choir divide among the many and the few by lot. Basically what God is saying, I just told you who's who. Now give them according to their size. These are the numbers of the Levite clans. Now the Levites didn't have land because they were going to be God's right hand. They're going to make sure that the tabernacle is set up. They're going to make sure that the furniture is put in the right place. They had jobs to do. In other words, all these other people that were not Levites, they were the workers that worked outside in the community. They were the, they were the, what we would have as the doctors, the lawyers, the bankers, the teachers, they were that. And the Levites were the people that made sure that the temple was always prepared so that, and it was a lot of them, but they were not given any particular houses to own and land to own. But God, because God said, you're going to live off me, totally off me. I got you. These are the numbers of the Levites, and this is their clan. There's a lot of them now. By clan Gershon, they didn't carry a weaponry of war. They were making sure that when the people that went to war had somewhere to come and worship and be ready. God was like, my house got to have somebody working in it all the time. And these were Levites. These are the numbers of the Levite clan, Gershom and Gershonite clan, Kohat and the Kohat clan, Mari, Marari and Marat clan. The Levite clan also included the Libnite clan, the Hebron, the Hebronite clan, the Mahite clan, the Mushite clan, the Korahite clan. These are the numbers of the Levites by clan. Gershon and Gershonite clan, Kohat and the Kohite clan, Maria and the Maria clan. The Levite clan also included the Libanite clan, the Hebronite clan, the Midhi clan, the Mushai clan, the Korai clan. Korah was the father of Amram. Amram's wife was Joshebed, a descendant of Levi, born in Levi's Moses' mom. Family during the Egyptian year, Joshebed bore Aaron, Moses, and their sister Miriam to Amram. Aaron was the father of Nadab and Abihu, Eleazar and Ithamar. However, those two guys, Nadab and Abihu, died when they offered unauthorized sacrifice in the presence of God. Now, this sounds like a lot, but when you read the word, you understand, your brain is already, it can put things in order because you read what led up to this. And that's how you read the word of God. It's not, reading God's word is not trying to, be, you know, what's going to happen to you once you die. That's not how we read the word of God. If you walk into this class and I'm reading all these names, you're probably going to say, what is she talking about? I'm not talking about anything. I'm just reading. And what makes it make sense to me is that I know what led up. I know that these names changed because a lot of people in Israel that God promised they could go, in between him saying you can go, they say, I'm getting off this ship. I can't follow all your, all your instructions. I mean, what you you saying too much. You, we hungry. And God said, let him off. He died. Some cursing, some saying Moses, you too much. Some said land too, too. We look like grasshopper. God said, all these folks, he raised them up, get, get them off. So now we got a new group. God said, I'm not stopping my plan now. Because inside of you, somebody's carrying my assignment. And he is going to give me back what I planned with Adam. I want my people and I want that seed that's supposed to get through the line of Judah. That's going to finally get to so you can see who Jesus is. I don't start nothing and stop just because you try to stop me. I'm God. And that's how I'm trying to be an example to us. So when you start your business, you don't just stop because somebody come against you. You got to cut some losses, keep it moving. You got to, if somebody going to die, somebody going to, it's going to be a lot, but stay with the plan. I'm talking to myself. All right. All these people, these are the ones numbered by Moses and Eliezer, the priests, the people of Israel, counted in the plains of Moab at Jordan, Jericho. Not one of them had been among those counted by Moses and Aaron, the priests and the census of the people of Israel taken in the wilderness of Sinai. God said, everybody that I told that's going to die 20 and up. And none of these people are in line. I kept my word. But God has said to them, they'll die die in the wilderness. Not one of them will be left except Caleb and son of Jep Jephunneh and Joshua the son of Nun. The total number of people of Israel was one, six, 
1,730. Uh, the number of the Levites, male, one month and older, came to 23,000. They hadn't been counted in with the rest of the people of Israel because they didn't inherit any land. All right. The Levites was 23,000. And they were not counted in that 601,730. Now, what is all this all about? God showed that I know how to keep a book. I know how to do it, be a, book, a bookkeeper and keep up with everybody I care for. And I absolutely care. I know you by name. I know you by family names. I know you. I know who died and I know who stayed alive. I know that not one person didn't come in here and be a part of this new entrance of, the, of Canaan that was 20 and up. So the oldest person right now in this group, based on how old they, if they were 19, they are 59 years old now and younger. So there was not a whole lot of difference between, it was, hold on, 600, Right now, 601, 730 people are getting ready to walk into uh, today on in chapter uh, 26 of Numbers. In chapter 1, it was 603,000 and some. I, didn't have, I don't have my exact number, but I know it was 603. So that was like they lost uh, 0.3 people. Very little. Like, in other words, if you had a dollar, I can't say it like that. But anyway, they lost very few compared to, it was almost balanced. Except they lost a little bit more in chapter 26 than they did in chapter uh, 1. And it was uh, it was God's will of all of them to make it. And this is, and I heard somebody say, how do you measure yourself? Have you been walking with the Lord 40 years? Are you just been going around doing the same thing? You still haven't grown in the word. You still haven't grown in relationship. Everybody know you by the same personality that you had 40 years ago. There has not been any increase. There's not been much knowledge. There has not been much change. You just changed the way you look because you're either bigger, smaller, hair gray. Did you find out that the word of God was supposed to be studied? And you're now doing more than you did 40 years ago? Or are you still saying the same thing? He said, if you are, then you, you're in trouble. Because with the word says, we are to grow in what? Grow in our behavior of grace. Grow in the grace of God. And then grow in the knowledge of God. So we don't want to stand still and just be the same. The same thing, you know. Yeah, the day that you got saved, you haven't picked the Bible up in 40 years and read it, and it's, it's not wise. So God's word is not about a book. <clears throat> this, this chapter right here doesn't make you want to shout. It, it's not a book that you clap about. I mean, you can make a song out of it. So you can help remember some of the things God did in chapter 26. But it's just an educational book to show you how God kept books kept his people, kept his word, and um, they're going to make it to the promised land. But according to chapter 26, we have a little bit less than the people who started. Now, mind you now, it was thousands and thousands of people that died, but they kept repopulating and kept having babies, and so it stayed steady. Let me say this, and then I'm done for this. In the education system in 400 years, public school did there. That's that line. And it might drop down, come back. And it just kind of stayed like that. So that means that the people in there that were really smart, it had some people in there that was not following the instruction. So the ones that did well looked like the ones that couldn't hardly be visible because the ones that didn't do anything 
kept that line from not going like this. And God is saying, my plan is for, I'm going to get as many as I can. So right now, I think this is the last time that he's going to allow anybody to count Israel. And you know when Jesus came and that temple was destroyed and that curtain was no longer positioned to keep God behind the curtain and only talk to the priest. He said, now I'm open to come to anybody. And I still know your name if you're on my list. He said, because I got a book that I'm keeping up with my class. I keep my role. He said, but if you decide that you don't want to follow my instruction, he said, I'll blot you out. That's what his word said. I will blot you. You don't want to do what I said to do. And the good thing about God is the Old Testament tells us what's going to happen if we don't follow instructions. And the New Testament says you can follow instruction, but if you don't, then the Old Testament will look old compared to what's going to happen in the New. That means that final day in Revelation when God said, I'm going to send scorpions and those things are going to bite and they're going to do it for five months and you're going to wish you were dead and you won't die. You'll, you'll cry out for death and you won't die. So there won't be no funerals then. All because all we have to do is stay in the word. And the good thing about it is when you stay in the word, you become fortified. If you a liar, you, you stay in that world, you're going you're gonna to lie less. Whatever it is, then until it's, you become just like Peter. You remember Peter? Peter, Peter did a lot of stuff, but then, then you go back and read the book of Peter. It does not match the guy that denied Jesus. Not his, you would think that you were talking about, a, you, thought, you would think that you were talking to a brand new Peter. Because his life, staying with the word. Then he wrote the book of Peter, and he was talking. That man was, I mean, it was like, I was like, that's the same Peter? God said, that's what you get when you stay with me. Stay with that word. And things that used to bother you, going to stop bothering you. Things that, you know, that, you know, the relationship that you want to have with your wife, you're going to fall in love with her again. You're going to learn how to keep your hand off of women that don't belong to you. Because your, your mind and your body and your senses going to work together. That's if you stay in the Word. But if you decide that, I no, I don't want to stay in that, then you're going to get what people to get that don't stay in the Word. I'm staying in there. My, my plan is every day. And y'all, my motivation. Well, I'm in the Word because I love it. I just decided. It was, I, I love doing this. I'm going to go. go. Like, I'm ready to eat. They tell me something good cooking in uh, Genesis chapter 27. I'm getting ready to go taste it. Talk to y'all later. Love you. Bye.